Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be talking about one of the most unusual and to some extent one of the most poorly understood comets out there, the comet known as 29P, also known as Schwarzman Wachmann. The comet that's technically actually not a comet at all and instead seems to be a gigantic cryovolcano, basically a space volcano. And just recently the scientists studying this comet have reported that it's undergoing one of the brightest outbursts it's ever had. Or in other words, it's having one of the largest volcanic emissions on its surface. And so in this video I wanted to briefly discuss what exactly we think is happening on this object, what sort of an object this is to begin with, and more importantly why all of this is happening, and also why this comet looks so different from every other comet we have in a solar system. And to begin, let's start by locating this particular object. As you can see from this map right here, it's located just a little bit past Jupiter. And with a size of about 60 kilometers in diameter, it's basically a really really large ice ball. But because of the location in the solar system, this particular comet is also classified as a centaur. And the centaur in this case is usually some sort of a minor planet or basically a relatively large asteroid whose orbit is somewhere between some of the outer planets, between Jupiter, between Saturn, Neptune and Uranus. And today the scientists believe that there are a lot of centaurs out there, possibly millions of them, but only some of them have been discovered to date, and pretty much all of them have relatively unstable orbits, with some of them only staying in these orbits for maybe maximum a million years. And this means that at some point they're going to relocate somewhere else. Some of them might become moons, so for example it's believed that the moon Phoebe, moon of Saturn, was actually a centaur before, and other ones might relocate into the asteroid belt. There's also a suggestion that Ceres, the very large dwarf planet, was also a centaur a long time ago. But some centaurs have very unusual properties, and this is actually how they were found. Some of them, approximately 30 or so, exhibit cometary properties. Or they basically start having cometary tails and produce emissions, making them much more visible than before. But only three centaurs are able to do so beyond the orbit of Jupiter. The other ones only do so when they're much much closer in the solar system. And one of these cometary centaurs is 29P. But it doesn't actually produce the cometary tails for the same reason that a typical comet does. Or actually it doesn't even have a cometary tail at all. It really sort of looks like this really large puffed up ice ball. And interestingly enough, a lot of these particles then, because of the gravity, sort of fall back to the surface to potentially restart the cycle again. And since originally 29P was discovered back in 1927, the scientists for decades now have been able to establish a somewhat predictable pattern of its emissions. And so here's for example some of the most recent pictures taken in uh, September and October of 2021. And you can even see the volcanic eruptions happening in these regions right here. Okay, I keep calling it a volcano, but that's actually not correct. It doesn't really have any of these properties of a typical volcano on Earth. A more proper way of calling this would be a cryovolcano. A cryovolcano, like the ones we've seen on, for example, Enceladus, is essentially an eruption of what you would call cryomagma. Now, it could be liquid water, as you can see in this particular image, but it can also be a lot of other liquid elements, for example, liquid methane, liquid ethylene, or any other liquid hydrocarbons like the ones we've discovered on, for example, a Titan or some of the other objects. For example, here's one potential cryovolcano on the surface of Ceres. This one has been studied in a lot of detail, but no eruption has ever been seen. Here's another one also from Ceres as well. But the one that's been studied the most is the grainy volcano you see right here, this is also from Titan, the cryovolcano known as the Doom Mons, named after the iconic mountain from the Lord of the Rings. But 59P right here seems to be the most active cryovolcano we have in the solar system. In September alone it erupted at least four times, reaching the highest magnitude it's ever had or basically producing some of the most active eruptions. Which means that this is the most energetic outburst this comet has had in the last few decades. And as always you can find some of the best images in regards to cometary eruption right here on Twitter. This is from Adrian Sonka from the Berthold Observatory and right here you can kind of see how tremendously powerful this emission was. And this is just one of these eruptions. Within about two days four different eruptions occurred, releasing a pretty large amount of material and producing quite a lot of energy. And in total there are at least six different locations or technically six different volcanic mouths present on the surface of this object. You can obviously see the origin of some of them just from this picture alone. 
And when these eruptions occur, they occur extremely fast. All of this happens in just a few hours and increases the total luminosity of the comet sometimes up to about 250 times, so basically it becomes 250 times brighter. But whatever is happening to the comet now is a little bit unusual. Normally it only has about 7 to 8 eruptions per year. It doesn't often have so many eruptions happening all at once. But there is a periodicity to these eruptions, which also explains how all of this works. The period here is about 57 days. Or in other words, major eruptions happen every 57 days. And this periodicity is most likely caused by the fact that this comet is spinning. But unlike other objects, it's spinning very, very slow. The majority of comets out there normally take approximately a few hours to maybe a maximum a day to complete a single rotation. This one doesn't. It takes roughly around 57 days, which in the end produces relatively long days and relatively long nights. And so during that one month of nighttime on the comet, so basically in the darkness here, a lot of the gas that escaped from the previous eruptions or a lot of the gas present in some of the other parts of the comet, because of the extremely cold conditions on the dark side of this comet, ends up moving lower and lower beneath the surface and very likely deposits into various pools or various chambers that then forms a lot of these large pockets of gas that sort of get sealed as the comet cools down and as the surface becomes harder. And so within about 30 days, the material that was emitted slowly falls back to the surface, then gets deposited underneath the surface of the comet, creating these relatively large deposits that very likely also become liquid because of the low temperatures. With two major gases being nitrogen and carbon monoxide. Both of them, when they freeze, can basically pile up on the surface and slowly make their way toward the center. And so for approximately 30 days or so, all of this gets deposited underneath. But then the day happens, and so when the sun comes out, the temperature starts to increase. And just like with the volcano here on Earth, this pressure then leads to the eruption, which unlike in typical comets, happens very suddenly. Normally in comets, the tails sort of gradually build up, but here all of this occurs extremely suddenly. Once again, this image right here sort of demonstrates this pretty well. And so the periodicity of this is due to the rotation of the comet. But one of the reasons it's been happening for the past few decades, and it's going to be happening for many years to come, is really because of the size and the mass of this comet. Because it's anywhere from about 40 to 60 kilometers in diameter, it has just enough mass to attract all of this gas released back to its surface. And so it basically restarts the cycle every 57 days. Obviously, some of the material gets to escape, but the majority falls back to the surface. But it's also believed that the cryovolcanoes themselves change over time, and some of the material as it falls to the surface has a chance to actually break the surface, creating new volcanic mouths. And so there are definitely a lot of unanswered questions when it comes to this comet, its activity, and cryovolcanism in general. And unfortunately, to date, this particular comet, despite being extremely unique and very different from anything else we have in the solar system, has not really been studied that well and did not receive enough attention from some of the scientists. Being the most exciting cryovolcano in the solar system, this definitely deserves a lot more attention. And since a lot of this material in the comet is also believed to be the primordial stuff that formed billions and billions of years ago, this would be a perfect opportunity to study some of the oldest material in the solar system by basically just capturing it right next to the comet. And because a lot of this stuff is also organic molecules, this makes this an even more interesting opportunity. But unfortunately, to date, there is really no mission planned at all. Hopefully, this will change in time. But since unlike other comets, this one is a centaur, it also means that, as I mentioned, its orbit is unstable. Today, the scientists believe that by the year 4000, it's going to migrate into an entirely different region and thus very likely stop being what it is today. It's going to stop being a cryovolcano. It might move somewhere to the outskirts and become something entirely different, or it might move closer to the um, inner solar system and fall apart completely. So in other words, it only has maybe about 2000 years to go before it completely changes and disappears. Nevertheless, at this moment, it's one of the most interesting objects in the solar system and is the most active cryovolcano we have. Basically a space volcano erupting several times per year. With the biggest eruption, for some reason, happening now. And why exactly this eruption is more powerful than previous ones is obviously not really known right now. Either way, once the scientists discover more, or once we have more information about the comet, I'll make sure to follow this up with another video. 
Until then, check out some of the previous videos on the topic, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining a channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.